Hey, this is Kevin with Imagination Hobbies. Coming at you with something a little different. I just finished this ship I've been working on. And I haven't been working on it lately, really. I kind of finished it before, and it sat around without sails. And I finally got around to ordering some sails for it. Once you're just made out of like a 2mm foam, and they're airbrushed. They look really cool though. And this is a ship that I uh, use, or will use for Dungeon Dra Dungeons and Dragons or D&D. Let me get this guy out of here. Let's put him somewhere over here you can see him. I got my goblin crew on there right now. So I painted this little goblin crew up. You can see they're all working away at manning the cannons and the ship. And that one's getting eaten by a giant fish. And then there's the captain up there. Now there's some stuff up here you probably might not be able to see because it's kind of out of frame, but I've got a goblin here in the crow's nest. I made that crow's nest out of a laser cutter and MDF and some toothpicks. Or I used the laser cutter. And then we got this lion up here. And that was busted off of a glass stir stick. And I thought it would make a really cool topper. And towards the front of the ship we also have this other lion. Which, oh man, it's really hard to see. I wonder if I can get it in the light. Anyway, that's a gold lion too. It's just hard to get in frame. This is a pretty big ship, and my light box is meant for, it's an airbrushing booth, so unfortunately it's not quite big enough to fit this all in. That's kind of what it looks like. <clears throat> and I think this is a frigate, or galleon or something, I'm not really sure exactly the ship type. But it's kind of cool, it's got all these little cannon turrets. All these cannons, these cannons in the center roll up to it and go out the portholes and then these are just glued on cannons for effect that are like, you know, on the second, or on the lower levels, I guess. This is like a double, triple deck ship. This ship was designed for a game called Blood and Plunder really cool uh, game now this I got at Adepticon I was selling at Adepticon I was running one of the booths there um, not for my own business but helping someone else with their business at the time and uh, they were selling these resin ships from Blood and Plunder and um, they had a bunch of like I don't know resin holes in them and they were defective so I was able to get this huge ship with, at a pretty steep discount, and then I went and just sculpted and re did all the the holes and the bubbles and fixed everything on it because I can sculpt a little bit with the they call it green stuff is one of the sculpting mediums that you can use and uh, kind of refurbished it right. I went and then I casted all these porthole covers out of resin because I didn't have enough for it. And then individually made all these ropes out of, I can't remember what that, like paper clips or something. Painted all those up. Purchased these little cannon cannons. And tied all this up myself. You see these giant obnoxious knots, but you know, it's, it's just the rope that I had. I wanted to make it in a way where it kind of made sense. You can climb up the side of this all the way up into a single ladder, all the way up into the crow's nest. And then this guy, if he wants to jump down, he can use this rope. Come down here, 
and he can get down this way. And so it's all it's very playable. That's why some of these ropes maybe aren't completely accurate to a real ship, but they allow you some like playability to say your character, you know, jumped from this rope or you know, tight rope walked from this rope to here. You know, it's kind of a game using your imagination and stuff, so but here's this ship. I'll show you another ship too. Uh that I just finished the sales for. So this these sales I bought as a kit on eBay um from a guy who does this and I have my own airbrush and I know where to get this two millimeter foam. So after setting this all up, my um after setting all this up from the kit that I bought, I was like, oh, I'll just give it a try at making my own. And then I made my own. It only cost me three dollars. Um I spent, you know, I did a little bit less detail on mine, but I didn't really care. The difference isn't really substantial enough for me to spend too much time on it. Um, I also wanted a lighter color than this for my other ship. This ship is very dark. It has, you know, burgundy and black and dark brown, and it goes good with the the really antique-looking sails. And then I'll show you my other ship now. And here's my other ship. Cannot re remember what this ship type is. Uh, uh, well, could be a sloop. Might be too big to be a sloop. But here's the sails I made. I'll show you this little trumpeter in front. I put this on the front mast. Now, I know in real life, these things weighed, you know, hundreds of pounds, maybe even a thousand pounds, and you couldn't put them on the front of the mast. They would typically go here. But, you know, this is for a fantasy game, and I thought it was kind of cool to put it on the very tip of the <clears throat> edge of the mast there. And so these are a bit lighter. And so are the colors. So if you can see here, this has got blues and yellows and golds. The guns are done in a silver instead. This has a lighter deck color. And it's using browns instead of blacks. And then here's the sail. I can flip it around here like this too. Maybe this looks better. I don't know. I don't have a lot of room that I'm working with, so sorry I keep. That looks a little bit better. But yeah. And you can see this little trumpeter chick on the front. She's pretty cool. And then these sails, I made them so they look bellowed out a bit more. <clears throat> Since most of, the, most of the work is done in these front two here. And the other one had a lot more sails, so this doesn't have any toppers at the top or anything like that. I did put a crow's nest here. This is off some toy or something that I drilled a hole through so I could put it through the um, pole and fix it here and glue it in. And I made a bunch, just like on the other one, I didn't really show you this, but... I did a bunch of eyelets because this is just foam so I um, put a bunch of eyelets in these sails so they didn't rip through or anything like that if they get pulled on yeah so that's uh, that's that one all these guns here these little smaller cannons six pound guns or something like that i think is what they call them and i think that's representative of the weight of the cannonball it will fire now this i did something a little more uh, advanced i did like some of the real rigging that you would see this was very difficult to do um do not recommend <laughs> really hard to do 
Then I started uh, tying knots up that way, and then I got to a stopping point and didn't want to continue. And I'm not going to do these front ones, too. Like, I'm just going to leave them as they are. It's a lot of work to do this really fine rope work. I mean, this is thread for a needle, effectively. And then wrap tying them off and, and wrapping it around. I, I don't remember what these are called, but that's it's just intense, dude. It's real model ship making, and I commend anybody who can have the patience to do that. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just tie these up the rest of the way across. Do the other one, you know, just across, just tie them up so you can actually, like, use it. Like, you can kind of walk on it or whatever or put a little figure's arm through it and it can it would it can kind of balance there. And I, I'm going to forego doing these ones um, up to there. Because, you know, they do kind of get in the way as well for playability aspects. Uh, I did make them removable, so these sails come off, and the other ship, the sails come off. I just just pull it off this way, you know, let that loop loose, and then push it the other way, and that this loop comes off, and then the sails just attach. So real easy, you know, just take it off, basically. But I hope you enjoyed this. I know this video probably, I don't know, didn't need to be 10 minutes long. But I'm kind of proud of uh, how they turned out. really like the look of them. The colors that I used. Uh, again, you know, these are casted. And little pin. They were pin set in there. For stability. And for looks. To make it look like the rope is pulling open the hatch. All these cannons have been painted differently. These ones have gold all the way around them. Gold paint. That takes a while to do. And I've always wanted to do like a model ship. Um, I've custom made my own before. I got about halfway done with making the hull. Like literally designed the whole thing from the ground up myself. And it had a removable second floor. Um, where you can get inside and stuff. And uh, I did that one. I think it was like 18 or 19. I was like making that. And I got about halfway done with just building the hull from scratch. And doing individual planks and all that other stuff. It was just too much. Um, maybe I didn't have the full skill set to do it yet. And that's kind of why I gave up. Um, also just like, you know, it takes so much time and money. Um, but this again was, I got, I think I got this one new, put this little ladder on here. I think I bought this one new and I don't think this one had like quote unquote problems, but I did have to cast these porthole hatches. And then I made, I, like I said, I just made these sails today. I just got done making them. So I think they turned out pretty cool. But, again, it's Kevin with Imagination Hobbies. If you guys enjoy ship stuff, nautical stuff, ancient coins. I had an uh, ancient piece of eight, an eight real coin on my channel in one of my last videos that I recently purchased, a genuine one from a shipwreck. But, anyways, it's Kevin with Imagination Hobbies signing off. Have a good day.